I have the pleasure to introduce you to Roberto Stucchi. He takes care of the, mainly of the wine production, so he's the winemaker and uh, he will uh, explain us a little bit about the history. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, this is a very special place. Uh, monastery is uh, founded called Tibuono, Badia called Tibuono in uh, 1050. So there's almost a thousand years of wine being made here, the land being managed. The same land has been managed for the monks up till uh, the 1800s and then uh, by our family since, aided, since the 1840s. Uh, long history, uh, we still use the cellar that we, the monks were using um, and today this is also a place where you can come and stay. We have uh, rooms, it's a bed and breakfast, we have apartments that you can stay at, uh, we do cooking courses, there is a restaurant. We are surrounded by forest uh, which originally was managed and planted by the monks. Um, uh, it's a very uh, it's a quiet, spiritual place, uh, very enjoyable. Uh, we've been working with wine, food, uh, with the culture of the area. We like to show what's beautiful about this place, about Tuscany and Chianti in particular. Well, we show people around the monastery and the cellar and the cloister, which is where we are now. And uh, then we have stops where we taste some of the wine. So it's, uh, you get the wine and you get a little bit of the history too. What kind of wine is this? Well, this is the Chianti Classico, the state Chianti Classico. It's mm -hmm. the central wine of our production. So we like to make wine from uh, traditional varieties, mm -hmm. so it's all Sangiovese with a little bit of uh, Canaiolo. So we're going into the crypt of the church, and of the church here, and this was turned into a cellar in 1810. This is what we do with many visitors. Uh, we go around, show them the different parts of the cellar and uh, taste some wines in different, different stalls. Now we are going into the Renaissance cellar. So this was a, a, a more recent, uh, an expansion of the cellar. So uh, in the, the oldest room is uh, the one next uh, and uh, this was uh, expanded in the 15th century. Mm -hmm. It had casks obviously, but now we keep all our collection of historical vintages. They go back to 1937, the oldest, and we have almost all vintages from after the Second World War, from 46 on. And you can drink them? You can drink them. Uh, the oldest that would still drink well is 1958. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a really old, this is a 1947, but uh, you know, I'll move it slowly so the sediment doesn't get moved. And, but you can see the level, mm -hmm. which is still very good. You know, it's at the beginning of the neck. Wow. For a bottle this old, this is great. And because the bottles were sealed with paraffin. Okay. Uh, so, you know, you can see the color through the glass and this is, might still be alive, this wine. Mm -hmm. you know, it's still red, yeah. which is a good sign. The level is good. So, uh, this is something that we could still drink. So this is the 18th century cellar. Mm -hmm. So this is the last uh, uh, part built and uh, here we ate most of the Chianti Classico and Reserva. Chianti Classico for one year and Reserva for two years. So this is the next step in our wine tasting. So we're going to have the Chianti Classico Reserva. Chianti Classico Reserva was the first wine that we bottled. And uh, our father started in the 50s. We were one of the first estates to bottle Chianti Classico in a regular bottle. Uh, and this is a wine uh, that will age for 15, 20 years in a bottle, mm -hmm. so very good ager, so it's enjoyable now, but as it spends more time in the bottle, it will develop more complexity yeah. and uh, really change over the years, but many, many years from now, it will still drink wonderfully. Mm -hmm. And if you open such a bottle, normally you would let some air to for the wine, a, how much? For a young reserve, uh, yes, it's not a bad idea if you have the chance. Uh, an hour or two before mm -hmm. it will help to open up. It's always like most times of Sangiovese, it's always about elegance, complexity, food friendliness. Sangiovese is not a very muscular wine usually, but more again elegance and uh, how it works with food and how it complements the meal. So now it's your turn. If you want to come here and share the experience, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm.